technical and physical limits. A 5,000 TEU ship, built to carry 5,000 20-foot containers, won't fit through the Panama Canal. The biggest container ships are more than twice that size, and there are plans for a new class of vessel almost double the size again. The next major constraint might be the Straits of Malacca off Singapore. It's estimated that maybe a 22,000 TU ship would be the maximum that could, th could fit through the Straits of Malacca. I think our history has taught us that it's a very dangerous game to predict how big container ships might or might not get. With so many boxers on board these ships, their tiny 13-strong crews can have no idea what they contain. We do not know. It's too much. I mean, uh, uh, if you have all, uh, make all the papers available for us, I mean, we will not have time for reading it. Zero, zero, five. Zero, zero, five. Each person working in the global container supply chain concentrates solely on doing their job to move the box as quickly as possible to its next destination. It's so efficient that this ship may be gone by tomorrow. We'll bring in seven, eight hundred containers. A few hours afterwards, we'll leave again. Felix Do receives shipping schedules from its customers just a few hours in advance. Planners then work out where to dock the ships and which order to load and unload all the boxes. It's a huge logistical jigsaw puzzle. Unsurprisingly, they have computerized assistance. All the, the work sequencing is automated now, so each piece of equipment has a computer screen in its cab the computer will look forwards, it will decide which is the next best job for that piece of machine and allocate that machine to a particular job. What that does is it makes much more efficient use of our equipment and means that nobody is delayed unduly and that we can better allocate resources to the urgent jobs. In the past, this work would have needed tens of thousands of men. Today, the smooth running of the whole quayside operation is overseen by just one man. I think on a good day we could be talking about 7,000 boxes in a 24-hour period, yeah, about a week, 40 to 44,000 boxes. It's a lot of boxes. Isn't it? it doesn't always go to plan. The supervisor has been called out to a problem with one of the cranes. It can be a difficult place to drive around because you've got traffic coming from every angle, including above your head. You have to just look absolutely everywhere all the time. A crane sensor has warned that one of the containers it lifted from the last ship was overweight. It means the crane now has to be tested to check it's safe to continue work. But that could delay unloading by up to 20 minutes. It doesn't seem like a lot, 20 minutes, but when you're talking about a 14,000 TEU cargo ship, running that thing for 20 minutes costs a lot of money. You know, I think about $30,000 an hour is about an average or something like that. So if you put it in monetary terms, you know, like they say, time is money, and down here, time is a lot of money. doing a crane shuffle. Um, we're taking the crane which we have a potential problem on and we're just moving it off the ship and we're going to bring on another two cranes. So instead of using 12 and 13 which you can just see moving off, we'll use uh, 10 and 11 instead. Modern container ports work to such tight timetables that solving problems quickly is vital. Each ship crane and lorry is crucial to keeping in the global conveyor belt of container cargo moving. It means any small problem has the potential to turn into a big one. It just starts a, a kind of a, a chain of delays which at times can be impossible to get out of. We don't want the ship to have to sail 
with some cargo on it that should have came off at Felixstowe and actually ends up having to potentially go back to China or, or wherever it came from. To see why this is so important, you only need to look a bit further up the supply chain.